What's going on everyone? John Ramdeen here and this is Fight News Now Extra. Robin Black will be joining me in a little bit to discuss the day's events. Making headlines today, a former UFC lightweight is sentenced to 18 months for purse stealing. The Rhino is out and Fedoshin is in against Shlomenko for the title. And Houston Alexander will try to mop the floor with the janitor in his promotional debut. That's what's in the news. Now let's find out more about these stories. <music> 35-year-old Swedish-Iranian fighter Reza Madadi has been released by the UFC following a conviction in Sweden for aggravated theft. The lightweight and several others were arrested for allegedly breaking into a designer handbag store after police linked them to the crime, which took place this past May. In April of this year, Mad Dog took home the $50,000 submission of the night bonus for his Darce choke victory over Michael Johnson. But Dottie denies the charges and has until the 6th of September to file an appeal. Affliction veteran Brett Cooper has an opportunity at redemption as he gets another crack at Alexander Shlomenko, but this time Bellator Gold will be on the line. The Rain Training Center pupil subs in for WEC veteran Doug Marshall, who suffered a broken hand and was forced to withdraw from his title showdown. Cooper is 8-2 in his past 10 and will meet the Russian champion in the main event on September 7th at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Bellator has put together a late heavyweight tilt that is sure to satisfy the most jaded fans as UFC veterans Houston Alexander and Vladimir Matyshenko will go head-to-head -head on September 13th. Alexander replaces former champion Christian Mpumbu, who pulled out of the fight after an injury to his hand. The 41-year-old Nebraska native is coming off back-to-back -back stoppage wins after losing three straight, while the janitor will be looking for his first win in three outings after being released by the UFC earlier this year. The event will be headlined by Pitbull Freite taking on UFC veteran Diego Nunes in a featherweight affair. Joined now by Robin Black and Bellator obviously doing the things that they need to do. Houston Alexander, he's a name, people saw him, although the last time they saw him in the UFC didn't look great against Kimbo Slice, but at least he's a name taking on another name in Vladimir Matyshenko. I know these guys are kind of in the twilights of their career, but you know they're, they have names, I, and I think that's what Bellator needs right now, guys that people have seen before, and the responsibility is on them to go out and entertain, put on a show. Yeah, and you know, hey man, there's a lot of interest in different kinds of fights. A lot of people care about about, you know who's up next for a title shot what does this fight mean this fights kind of not relevant but that fact is not relevant because it's a great fight you know you take two great athletes that people know it's not gonna be very complicated Houston Alexander you know yes the Kimbo Slice fight didn't look good but if we go back a little bit further the guy can knock people out this is the kind of fight that, that a casual fan will really like you know a deep analytical fan of any sport likes the minutia of the sport they get excited by the small interesting details casual fans like home runs they like, you know, quarterback sacks, and they like big knockouts, and these guys will provide that. Uh, Bellator in the past said, we're not going to pick up any of the UFC scraps, but Alexander, Matyshenko, yeah. Diego Nunes, Paul Sass. Uh, should they stick to that, or should they just look at who are the most entertaining guys and w which guys will bring eyeballs to their organization? I, I just I don't think they need to worry about who's been cut by the UFC, just pick up the best fighters that are available. Yeah, Bjorn Rebney's vision was we will develop our own stars. We will develop great athletes on our own. We'll help them rise to relevance against each other. But when Viacom came along, Viacom said, we got a bank account, we got all kinds of money, just get whatever you can get, get us some big names. And that's what's going on now. I don't think it'll hurt Bjorn uh, Rebney's credibility because for a promoter, and, and promoter is kind of a dirty word in a lot of cases, but for a promoter, he's fairly high, well respected, you know, so I think it's just an issue of at this point, they're a, a bigger, growing organization. They're trying to do pay-per-views, they're doing a show a week on Spike TV, they got to pick up whatever's out there. We're going to talk about Matt Brown, who had an impressive victory in Boston over Mike Pyle. Brown says that he is now ready to not only face George St. Pierre, but he's ready to wrestle him and beat his ass. Uh, I wasn't that really keen on Brown over, over his career, but you know, it's undeniable. His last six fights, very impressive, has stoppage wins over Mike Swick, Jordan Meehan, and now Mike Pyle. Uh, I think this guy's now ready for a top 10 guy. Remember when Rick Story was like a yep. fight or two away from that very top, and we loved him and everybody loved it, and, and, and Matt Brown's in that same position. These guys can win fights by just being tougher SOBs than the guy they face. Really, that's it. Is Matt Brown good? 
going to out-wrestle George St. Pierre? No. Even Matt Brown probably doesn't really believe that, but on another level he does, because in his mind, you know, all your technical wrestling in the world is going to be irrelevant. When I want it more than you do, I have bigger balls than you do, and I come harder at you than, than you're going to come at me. And that's how he's been winning fights. So everything in this guy's psyche is telling him what I believe is true and what I believe works, and that makes for a dangerous Matt the Immortal Brown. Now, for the UFC, do they just keep Matt Brown on the sidelines, so to speak, until we find out who the winner of the fight between George St. Pierre and Johnny Hendricks is, or... It is it more likely that they'll give this guy another welterweight uh, before he gets a crack at the title? Well, you know, Matt Brown is a guy who's like, I'll fight anybody, and I really don't care if I win or lose. And you believe him. The reason he fights with this ferocity is because he's not holding anything back. He's not playing safe. He's going to fight you, and he's going to smash you. And sometimes you lose fights like that. So is he going to stick to that mentality and be like, whatever, man. Give me Tiago Alves. Give me anybody. I'll fight them. Or is he going to be like, hey, man, I'm almost at a title shot. Guys get rich like this. Yes. Guys get world famous like this. I say the Matt Brown that we can see, every piece of indication is just like, whatever, man. I'm making a lot more money than I thought I would. I'm fighting dudes. I got fans. I love my job. Just keep lining them up. Of course. Part of the game is to get inside of the cage, entertain the crowd, get yourself a victory. But you also have to play the real strategy, and that's career longevity. And Carlos Condit was one of those guys, got the, that interim title, had the opportunity to fight other people, decided to wait for his opportunity to face George St. Pierre, where he will make the most money. Uh, but for Matt Brown, I think this is how he makes yeah. money. He just goes out, entertains people by stopping them in the first or second round. And I think you will have a huge following. And I don't think it matters that you have the title around your waist. People know what type of fighter they're going to get. And Matt Brown is one of those guys that seems to entertain a lot of people. For sure, man. And you said Matt Brown and you said Carlos Condit. Hey, man, I like to see those guys fight. Condit Cameron, why doesn't you know Matt Brown fight one of those two? The winner makes sense, the loser makes sense too. But you know, you compare them. Carlos Condit is a guy with a wife and a family and, and parents that are really close to him in a brand new house and, and uh, you know fairly well educated and he's thinking about his career and it all makes sense for him. Matt Brown's a former drug addict who don't shave his chest and he doesn't care what anybody thinks and he's making knockout of the night bonuses and he's got more money than he was expecting and he's loving his life and he's exceeding even his own expectations. They have no similarity at all, but I'd love to see him fight. And I would love to see Carlos Condit and Matt Brown. It would be an absolute barn burner. Don't change that channel. More from Fight News Now Extra.